would I lie to you? Oh, ow. Would I lie to you, honey? Now would I say something that wasn't true? I'm asking you, sugar, would I lie to you? Oh, oh. All right, sorry. So, I'm a professional singer. I've been admired in many parts of the world for my singing. Don't believe me? What do you think, I'm lying to you? Well, maybe. Depends on what you mean by the word lie. Uh, but let's get back to that later. For now, let's talk about this notion of trust. Now, the book talks about trusting behavior and trustworthy behavior. Now, these two concepts go hand in hand because we can't trust somebody unless we deem them to be trustworthy. So, what is trusting behavior? Well, it's when we behave in a way that relies on another person to not take advantage of, of us in some way. We are all vulnerable all of the time. We must rely on the people in whom we put our trust to not take advantage of that trust. So trusting behavior might include telling a friend in confidence a secret that we don't want other people to know about. Maybe it's something really embarrassing or very sensitive information of some kind. When we engage in trusting behavior, we believe that the people we are entrusting this information with to honor this unspoken contract of confidence. Trustworthy behavior is what we exhibit when we don't take advantage of the trust that has been placed with us. For example, a friend tells us a secret, very sensitive information. Trustworthy behavior is keeping that secret, not sharing it with other people. If we were to break that trust, that friend might think twice before sharing with us again. We want people to trust us, and our behavior should reflect that. We need to be careful with this whole topic of trust because deception can take many forms. But wait, what is deception anyway? Well, I think most people can tell if something is a lie or not, but there is a lot of gray area within deception, which is why I want to talk about the four forms that deception can take. What I'm about to discuss is from Interpersonal Communication by Corey Floyd, which I will link for you to take a look at in D2L. Floyd points out that there are four types of deception, falsification, exaggeration, omission, and equivocation. Let's dissect these one at a time. The most obvious is falsification. That's just flat out lying, not telling the truth. When you falsify, there is not even a shred of truth in what you're saying. If I were to say, for example, I once sang a solo at Carnegie Hall in New York, well, that's a complete lie. There's no truth in that whatsoever. The next type of deception is called exaggeration. <coughs> Pardon me. Now, for the purposes of this discussion, exaggeration is different than hyperbole, even though we often use them in the same way. Hyperbole is an exaggerated statement that we wouldn't expect people to believe. I'm so hungry, I could eat a horse. Now, I'm quite hungry, but I certainly am not so hungry I could literally eat a horse. That's hyperbole. The goal behind hyperbole is not to get somebody to literally believe me. With exaggeration, however, I am trying to get somebody to believe my deception. I have been singing all of my life since I was nine years old. Well, okay, kind of. There is some shred of truth in there. In reality, I started singing when I was nine, but I took over 20 years off in the middle where I wasn't singing. If I'm trying to get somebody to believe that I've been singing for 30 years straight, I might make that above statement, but it's exaggeration, and it's intended to get you to believe something that isn't entirely true. The thing about exaggeration is that it is plausible, and it is intended to bleed, mislead whoever you might be speaking to. The next type of deception is called omission. This is leaving pertinent information out when communicating with somebody. Uh, this is only deception when we feel like the person we are talking to would want to know that information. For example, if I was at an audition talking about my musical theater experience, and I said that I have performed in 30 musicals over the years, but I leave out that in 25 of those musicals, I never actually sang. I was just an extra on stage and never sang a note. Then I would be engaging in deception by omission. I'm leading the person to believe that I have more experience than I have by leaving out a crucial detail. We probably lie through omission far more than we would like to admit. We probably do this almost every day. The final type of deception is called equivocation. This is when we cover up information by giving vague information out. Somebody has a new haircut that we think is ugly, so we cover that up by saying something like, wow, I've never seen anybody wear their hair like that, or that is the most unique haircut I've ever seen. You're not saying you dislike it, but you're also not saying you like it. If somebody cooks a horrible dinner and you might say, wow, that was quite a dinner. 
<laughs> again, very vague without saying what's really on your mind. Equivocation is kind of like omission, but a little more sneaky. If done well, you can actually lead a person to believe the opposite of what you are thinking. This happens a lot when somebody asks us an opinion about something, but we don't want to hurt somebody's feelings. How is my singing, I ask, and you say, wow, I've never heard anybody sing that song like you just sang it. I leave that conversation thinking you've paid me a compliment, when in reality you have just dodged my question and misled me. As you can see, deception goes way beyond just a flat-out falsification. In fact, I would say most people falsify very little. We lie through omission, through exaggeration, and through equivocation a lot. But does that make it better or worse? I don't know. And I don't have time to talk about it. I need to get back to singing. Would I lie to you? Would I lie to you, honey? Now when I say something that isn't true, I'm dating you when I lie 